Hey everybody, welcome to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelaresco, and you're listening to us live on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. You can access the show by typing in www.themicroeffect.com, then click on the appropriate links, the chat room links, come on in, make friends, get acquainted, solve some ans- get some answers, solve some solutions, share ideas, and cooperate. I also publish information at www.health-access.com as well as information is posted at uh, bye bye info at bye bye blue sky.com with articles on health, remedies, and general information going on worldwide and right here at home. This program is designed to help you keep your health and to show viable and inexpensive alternatives that can keep you and your family healthy and to alleviate or remove unwanted illnesses that may occur in our lives from time to time. Making you aware that not all that's supposed to be safe is, in some cases, allowing to understand the hidden dangers and possible solutions to prevention or protection of your health. Been in the health food industry as well as a personal consultant and bodybuilder trainer, assisting people in finding health solutions that utilize different healing modalities from different cultural themes as well as in herbs, supplements, vitamins, essential oils, and foods. You can access me by going to my website at augmentinforce.com, A-U-G-M-E-N-T-I-N. F-O-R-C-E dot com. You can also check me out at independs dot podomatic dot com uh, forward slash RSS if you can't get to get it that way. I also do personal consultations as well, whether through the Internet, through the IMs, phones, personal visits, as well as in-house workshops for families, individuals or groups. I have on the AugmentInForce.com page a catalog link. And in the catalog link, you'll see a variety of things that we are distributing and selling. One of the things is the flash drive. Feel free to access the flash drive. It's a 32 gig flash drive with 30 gigs of information. It's got three books that I put out. It's got information on databases with farming, homesteading, and uh, uh, bushcraft. It's also got... Uh, radio shows it's got interviews it's a full full complete package and 120 videos that we've done on the YouTube as well we've got all kinds of things like the bucket and I'm going to talk tonight a little bit about the triangle which is a modification of the bucket where you can actually take this into the tub to remove nano poisoning and I'm going to explain about that in the show Uh, we also have tincture remedies uh, remedies uh, supplements and a whole host of things that may help you so for more information you can reach me at independs at yahoo.com I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-Z at yahoo.com or contact me here at 519-977-5351. And if you have any questions or comments pertaining to the show or pertaining to health, feel free to call in at 208-935-0094. And today's date, which I didn't mention on the previous show, is 11-26, November 26, 2016. And we're still here. <laughs> I'm going to recap what I talked about in the first half of the show, just in case you didn't catch it, or just in case you're just tuning in. We're talking about AI data mining, and I do I did I did a podcast on it as well, independence.podcast.com, where you can go and listen to it as well. I give a lot more detail on it. I will talk about uh, talk about it here in the show as well because I think it's an important topic. A lot of you are having this attitude that you've been, you're defeated, you can't win, what's the use, we're screwed anyway. How many of you said this, have heard this come out of your own mouth? How many of you are saying, well, you know, it looks like it's pretty bad, I don't think I can do anything anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do whatever. Or you get hit, you got hit with the nano poisoning. And you feel like you're going to die, and you feel like you're dying. You think, oh, sh- bl- shuz butt, you know, I'm I'm done. I can't, I'm done. I'm finished, blah, blah, blah. When you're looking at that thinking, that thinking is being piped in. That thinking is being programmed through you, through a transmission. You are now a transceiver. Cell towers are all over the place which are pumping frequencies at you all the time. This is why I encourage you to wear a portable ground, which I will also explain how to make as well in the show. And this is one of the things you can do to help offset some of the impact of getting hit. The, when you're outside, you are vulnerable. Your eyes are the window to your soul. It's also a window to a direct access to your brain. 
So when the frequencies are coming in through the eyes, whether you're using a computer, whether you are on a, a Wi-Fi, a cell phone, an iPad, whatever it may be, if you walk, if you're looking at television uh, or any kind of movie, you are being hit with transmissions that you are completely unaware of that are coming through artificial intelligence, which is basically in the air. How many of you watched the movie Transcendence? Transcendence is talking about how you can take a human life and download the memories and the, and the uh, brain patterns into a machine that will actually access mm. or have ac full access to whatever you were, you know, and have that data completely stored. In the movie, they show that there was a guy who was transferred from one, from human to machine, and then was able to ex access the very air itself in constructing solar panels or be able to, to access any concept, any place, any time, and control even people by interfacing nanotechnology inside of people. It was able to access them and turn them on or off as it so desired. This was a metaphor of what this technology does or can do. And so when you're having these thoughts come in and you're being hit with frequencies, you are a transceiver because you have high amounts of nanoparticles inside of you which are extremely conductive, which again allow for this interface to occur. Um, yep. And when that interface starts to happen, okay, it will happen at the most um, focused time. In other words, when you're focusing on something, whether it be a TV show, a movie, a game uh, that you're playing, a, a solution or a problem you're working on, or a um, or um, any kind of computer research that you're doing, all of a sudden, you may see or may notice, you may not know, most of the time you won't notice it because when you start getting into that focus realm, you almost get into a state of sleep or whatever, which again is being induced by this technology because when you're in that sleep state, sleep-like state, you're now more open and more receptive to being accessed and what you see coming out of you are your memories that have, may have been dormant and dead for 20 or 30 years are now coming to the surface. <coughs> As a result, you're thinking that you're daydreaming these things or you're visualizing these things and so because they're not foreign to you you don't normally you don't recognize them because we've been so taught to disassociate ourselves from things that are going on about us or even in us as a result you may see those memories start to being manipulated and somewhat contorted to create a emotional response all of a sudden you may have been involved with somebody and there was something that you were wronged with all of a sudden, you may have certain things pop up in envisioning what you would do if you had the power to do something. Uh, or you may see a sexual, th a sexual thing happen. You may see an anger thing happen. You may see an anxiety, a fear, a stress. All kinds of things that may come out or things that you've, been, you've actually been ex have experienced, again, as being drawn out of you. You may see music come out of you. You may see TV shows come out of you, radio programs you've listened to come out of you because it's accessing or data mining your brain so it can have full access and have a better understanding. According to the research about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence right now has an 83% success rate at analyzing and um, forecasting things that would happen or they could or that you're going to do. When you're doing, when you go online and doing your search on stuff that you're buying or want or looking to shop, ever notice when you go on an email or you go on any other site, all of a sudden those things you were looking for are showing up on your computer. You ever notice that? That's also part of data mining. It is following your thread to what you're doing, and so that it can keep a tab on what you're buying and where you're and where you're buying it from. When you go into a store, and they ask you for your your email. You know, I always reject it. I always tell them I have enough email coming into my email. I don't need any more. So they let it go. Because they can trace whatever you're buying. If you're buying it through a credit card, when you're buying it through cash, that causes some problems. <laughs> that causes some problems. But your cash also has been chipped. 
So again, they know so much money has been spent on a specific product, but may, and they may not know exactly where it came from, but they do know that the currency has been now uh, been put into the system. So there's a check and balance there as well. So when you're looking at this AI technology, it's already here, and it's already accessing you in ways you don't even understand. And you may find that it's a little bit disconcerting that something can actually access your brain, access your thoughts, access your memories, and pull them out. Because while you're in that sleep state, again, you're more relaxed, so you start dreaming. So it activates those chemicals to release those memories, or to release that, that, those uh, thoughts that you have. So the one thing that I did when I recognized it finally, I used uh, an, expletive de uh, an expletive terminology. I can't say on the radio because it was pretty strong words. <laughs> but basically, I called it out. Yeah, basically, my, yeah, there you go, mind raping people. It's exactly what it is. It's you're being violated again. We have been violated. We are constantly being violated against our own will, and we've been made to accept this violation as a normal procedure. Your right to privacy is almost non-existent, and now this is the ultimate violation where now they can go into your thoughts and read your, or extract, extrapolate from your thoughts memories that you've got inside. Again, who you are, what you are, and what you have, and what you've been through, and how you've lived, is your own personal affair, which you're now making it very impersonal. You ever notice some of the movies on TV today seem so realistic because they, guess where they got the information from? You know, when you check out a variety of majority of the people on the planet and you're able to access their information, access the data in their brain, you can now create a drama or, or a TV sitcom or whatever, and it's pretty close to what most people think about. And if most people are asleep in this matrix, then they keep, they keep that perpetual state of sleep going through entertainment. And when you watch the entertainment, <laughs> Again, it feeds, it's, again, accesses you again. So, again, when we're looking at these things, be aware that this is reality. Now, I've told you what to expect. I've told you what to look for. Now, someone's mentioning that the kids today cannot stop playing with their equipment because the equipment is constantly beaming them in the eyes. If they were to wear a strong enough dark reflective glasses, you may find that the kids may all of a sudden either lose interest or, or not take off the glasses. Because again, this is what would be again impl implanted or implemented into that program. The c program wants to have direct access to, your young, to the young people. End of story. They're more easier, more malleable to uh, uh, shape. And they haven't been through the ringer, so they don't see all the things. They have no clue what they're going going into. The millennials today are going to going through what we went through. Those of us born in the 50s, going through those transitions in the 60s and 70s uh, and 80s, they're going to go through it again. But this time, and it's going to be the same kind of transitions. But this time, the the way it's going to happen is far more refined, far more um, efficient because they worked out and fine tuned it from us. These kids will never know that they are uh, living a program. They'll never see that they're in a, a, uh, holographic, a holographic environment. They'll never see it. In fact, they will put, be put in what we used to call the projects. I don't know if some of you know what the projects are. I grew up part of my life in Detroit, and there was a section in Detroit where they had a section where all the kids with the suntan lived. And the kids with the suntan lived in these high-rise, 20-story buildings which they called projects because this was sort of an isolated area for this particular culture. And so they called them the projects. And in those projects, they conducted experiments on those people. They conducted drug experiments. They conducted experiments that made them more violent. They, they conducted experiments that basically uh, controlled experiments, to turned them into whatever automaton that they wanted to, and turned them into a isolated phenomena that again everybody rejected or everybody looked had a condescension or a judgment on them, a stereotype if you will this is what they called the projects back then today those projects will be called something else they will actually be called cities within cities high-rises full of Millennials who have no brain or any clue of what's going on 
and will be in a completely controlled environment and they will think this is normal. <laughs> so much for freedom. <laughs> and they will be and they will have constant, constant, constant again interactions with the AI which will extrapolate to, to into their brain or maybe even download into their brain anxiety and fears that don't even exist. And the media may even pr produce a war in front of them through the whatever visual aids that they have at that point, whether it be their phone or whatever, of some kind of war that's not even happening to keep them in a state of control, to keep them loyal to the state. This was something, this was done with the Orwellian concept. And again, here we are today back at that again. So when you're looking at a lot of the things that they're displaying on the media, they're basically telling you what it is. They're telling you, they're giving it to you. Again, it's just a matter of perspective here. And when you have an AI that can now, while you're in, in a high level of focus, have access to your brain because you are now loaded with nanoparticles, which they've saturated us with since the 1960s and 70s, uh, 60s in the air, 70s in the food supply. And now we're getting dumped on by more conductive uh, nanoparticles, chemtrails and whatnot. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Just a wee bit. How many times have you had thoughts pop into your head that weren't your thoughts? Ever ever asked that question? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? I say that all the time. These are not my thoughts. Where did that come from? So when you're looking at the things that have been done to us, the planet has been under one huge major experiment, especially the United States and Canada. We were the first to be exploited. We, most of us are first, first generation uh, families that have come from Europe initially. Uh, uh, so when we're looking at what transpired, we were the first, we went through it. They again kept on uh, modifying their experiment and now we are at the stage today where Things that are, that are accepted today would never have made it to the, to the uh, light of day. Transgenderism is the ultimate, ultimate lowdown or letdown of genetic experimentation that has been going on. And this is the end result of 40 and 50 years of tampering with the genetics of the earth, uh, uh, violating the genetics that the Creator had put on the planet. I don't believe in this, you know, Mother Nature crap. I think it's a lot of horse hockey. You know, when God created this planet, he had set things in a specific genetic, genetic sequence. And as a result, over the decades, over the millennia, things have changed, especially in the last 200 years in North America. We have gone from a one type of society to a genetically engineered society. And so this is going on today. And now with the introduction of nano, nanotechnology, the integration of the biology and the technology is creating a whole new set of dynamics that we've never ever seen before. And a lot of these dynamics are, again, with the genetics, is going to be, again, uh, highly, highly destructive. You know, people think that they can have power without a price. Everything has a price. Everything. Um... Anyway, now I want to talk about shielding. Okay, I make a repulsor. I'm going to talk about these magnets now. Now, the magnets can be any size, whatever you can afford. I usually got them the size of an American nickel, an American or Canadian nickel, which is probably, what, maybe a half inch <coughs> in circumference. So, and, it's, and they're only about maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch thick. They're not very big. They're, part, they're, they're ceramic magnets. I got mine at Michael's. They're pretty strong. Uh, and what you do is you get a piece of duct tape about maybe oh, eight or nine inches long, cut a piece, and put one magnet at one end and fold the tape over so that it's covering the, it's on the bottom, you, you put a flap over the top, and immediately start placing the magnets one after the other in a row uh, where they're repelling. Now, as you put three or four in, Take the edge of the tape and fold it over the magnets on each side, right and left side, so they don't come shooting out at you, because they will shoot out. Now, if you're going to use neodyme magnets, this is going to be a challenge, because they are very powerful. Uh, so what I did with mine is I put 
two ceramic, one neodyme, two ceramic, one neodyme, and I was able to put 20 in a row with very little difficulty. Because if you try to put neodyme against neodyme, it is a chore. Anyway, when you get 20 of them in, tape it, take the flap, flap it over, and then wrap it up. Um, there you go. Really, Princess Auto. Here in Canada? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I haven't gotten a home hardware way out in Essex to get them. <laughs> I got to find Princess Auto. Really? Cool. Um, anyway, see, that's what happens when you do radio shows. People come up with some great places to go shopping. Anyway, uh, when you place them in, again, I checked them just with the ceramic ma magnets alone at 20 of them. And with an, EM, uh, with an EMF gauge, and it puts out a field around about uh, between seven and nine feet. Now, if you make three of them, uh, put two on each side of you, either slip them under your belt or put them in your pocket, and one behind you or one in front of you. Create a triangular. Uh, man, you got to be kidding me. In Windsor? Oh, I got to find these places. Princess Auto, no kidding. Oh, man, I'm going Monday. Ha <laughs> ha. Jeez, oh, I'm driving way the heck up in Essex to find. <laughs> okay, cool, thanks. Um, anyway, when you put them on and you check the meter, it has a ten, a seven to nine foot spread. So you wear three of those, and again, when you put three together, it takes it out a little bit further, around ten to eleven feet. But that's putting a field around you, which can disperse or displace a direct shot at you. And when you cover your eyes, either with a set of mirror lenses or a real dark uh, pair of uh, sunglasses, you basically minimize any entry into the eyes. I use them primarily when I'm driving because when I'm driving, I get tired of getting ping beamed or pinged and I, or I go into a state of where I'm daydreaming while I'm driving. You know, how many of you have done that? <laughs> you know, and you think that's you and whatever. Or you, just, or you get into a mode where you're driving for so long, you get into the stare. You're on autopilot. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the brain... <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on back. We're going to talk more about this. All right, talk to you in a bit.
Okay, everybody, welcome back to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelleresco, and you're listening to us live on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. Um, today, with what's going on today, you got to start thinking in terms of protecting your genetic code. And by putting these things on, creating these things, you can distort or create a distortion so your genetic code or your DNA isn't being directly attacked or pulsed because of access to you and like I said you know you are being data mined regularly and again I didn't realize this until the other day when I was do I was actually playing a game one of these mind puzzle games where I had to I had to have a, a quick reaction and set up um, patterns in order to diminish the patterns or whatever anyhow <laughs> that's when I noticed that I was getting tired and I wasn't tired I wasn't tired, I wasn't exhausted, but I noticed I was going into this sleep-like state. And then I saw these memories of mine being extracted out, memories that were like 30 years old, which I have never really thought about uh, at all. And all of a sudden they were coming to the surface, and then I began, then I just started observing what was going on. I just was sort of distracted from the game and just watching this and seeing how my, I was, uh, what's called data mining, was, I was going through this. I thought, well, isn't this interesting? And then I get an email from a, another colleague up north who's contacted somebody from the United Kingdom who had the nano poisoning and said that they were, you know, they were done, they were given up, and they had this, oh, I'm finished, and so forth and so on. And the problem was not the person. The problem was the artificial intelligence was telling him to call it quit. You can't fix this, you're done. I know that because I went through it. First three or four weeks when I got exposed to this thing, I used everything in my repertoire to take this out and nothing was touching it. Nothing. I, I mean, I, I was able to diminish it somewhat, but this program was full on. And then I thought I had Lyme. Like everybody else is being prognosed with Lyme, I figured I might have had a Lyme, uh, a tick bite because I had been traveling, so it's a, it was a high probability. So I decided to make myself a device which would have zapped any lime, any tick, or any egg, or anything that might have gotten into me. Well, lo and behold, all of a sudden I had geometrical patterns pop up everywhere all over my body. So isn't this lovely? <laughs> then some more, some more expletive de depletives came out of my mouth. I was speaking very strong Mediterranean salt of the earth language, just to let you know what that means. Anyhow... One thing led to another, and I started again examining different things, and I started looking at this thing from an agrobacterium, but my other colleague from out west talked to me about nano, and we started getting into looking at the nano and the agrobacterium, found out that the nano and the bacterium or the biologic was one and the same. They actually had the exact same pr properties. But when you start going through it, and you hear all this bunk and bull roar about it's a mold, it's a goo, it's a lime, it's all this other's horse hockey, okay, none of it is true. And when you go through it and you start seeing these geometrical patterns form and you start pulling out of your body, you know, fullerene threads and origami and chips and quantum dots and God knows what else comes out of you, even, you know, uh, 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 basically polymer bases that have high levels of circuitry built into them already. 
you begin to think, what the bloody hell's going on? And then you start getting these thoughts come into your head. You're done. You're finished. You can't win. You are too far gone. Look what you've got. There's no cure, no fix, nothing. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you've had those thoughts, you pull up your socks and you say, Chuck, you, Farley. And you're going to fight. And you're going to tell this AI my favorite three wor two words, F-R-O. And for those of you who are Canadian, you understand what F-R-O stands for. For those of you who don't, ask somebody who's Canadian. <laughs> and if you ask me, i got to tell you after the show. But you got to have that attitude. And you got to have that stick to itness, and you got to have that resilience, and you got to have that fight. There is no sitting down, woe is me, maybe to leave me alone if I stick my head up my backside. It ain't going to happen. Okay? You better fight. And if whatever, however you believe, have a one on one with the great one because it's going to take some doing to get you through it. You are going to be hit emotionally. You're going to be hit psychologically. You are going to be hit physically when this thing hits, if it hasn't hit you already. And this AI is going to be pumping at all the time, 24-7, how much pain you're in, how much this you're in, how much that you're in. You have to fight. Okay, there's a difference. I'll tell you what the difference between faith and fear is. Faith and fear are exactly the same thing. There's no difference. The difference lies in the fact that faith will get you to move a mountain. It gets you to believe that you can move the mountain. Fear gets you to believe that you can't do nothing. Fear will lock you down. Fear will keep you shackled. Fear will keep you stupid. Because you're afraid to learn. You're afraid you might have to be responsible for the knowledge you gain. Too bad, so sad. Grow up. Grab your socks. Pull up your pants. Get off your arse. That's all there is seriously nobody can hold you by the hand on this one I, I myself have helped a lot of people but i tell them all the time this you're in for a duration this is going to be a fight because we've never have ever our generation anyway has never been exposed to an integrated technology with a nano bio biological concept and you have to have that attitude the difference between me and, to, and people today is i went through it without knowing anything and all I had was my wits and a partner out west who we, who we collaborated on and cooperated with each other to get to the answers in the bottom of this. And between the two of us, what you have today are some of the solutions that we have developed and created because we had to deal with this ourselves. Now, if I can do this, and all I am is just a guy who knows some stuff, so can you. Okay. I'm not a certified anything. I'm not some PhD, you know, with BS and BSCs and whatever degrees. I'm just like you, a guy who knows some stuff. And all I did was took, took the time and, ha and had the um, testicular fortitude to basically say, FRO, I'm standing up and I'm fighting this. And you better have the same attitude. When Jesus asked people, do you want to be healed? Basically, he was saying, are you, re are you ready for it? Are you, are you going to take the responsibility for it? Because that's what it means. Some people gave him all kinds of excuses. I, I couldn't have handled that. I'm not built that way. You give me an excuse, I will just say, Ugh, and I'll walk away from you or hang you up by your something. So, do you want it? That's the case. And you are now being attacked on a psychological level in regard to this AI. How many are feeling that you're not good enough? How many women out there, how many women out there listening to this program are feeling insecure? Over nothing. You're feeling insecure about how you look. You're feeling insecure about your breast size. You're feeling insecure about your backside. You're, you're feeling insecure because of the way you dress. You're feeling insecure because, you know, you, you don't have a certain amount of money. Or you're feeling insecure because of the way you live. I mean, you got these insecurities. They're, come, they're beaming at you from all directions, affecting your emotional stand and it's not even coming from you. You ever ask those questions in your mind, where is this insecurity coming from? Okay, where are these insecurities coming from? Think about it. Are they being piped into your brain? 
we got enough towers, God knows, you know, throughout the whole United States and Canada. <coughs> That's where they get most women is through their insecurities. To get them to re react to an emotional uh, reaction rather than to see where things are and what things are happening. Now, not all women, and again, it's a general statement, but that's basically what I'm trying to get across here. <coughs> when you start thinking, and the guys are no different. Guys will have all kinds of crazy thoughts going into their head. A lot of it is worry. A lot of it is anxiety. A lot of it is stress. That's being pumped into you. Oh, what if you lose your job tomorrow? Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, you know, um, I'm not successful enough. Or whatever crazy. Or, you know, you have thoughts pop in that have happened and are now being manipulated in your mind through this programming. Okay, my point I'm trying to get across is be aware of this. When you see people respond a certain way, that's a lot of times, believe it or not, it's a program that's got into their head and it's causing them to overreact or underreact or to uh, ha uh, have an unusual reaction. You know, so when we're looking at... Uh, uh, when you're looking at this... This is another part of this aspect that you have to be aware of. Now, again, the one thing that has this has caused me to deal with in this nano crap. I'm the canary in the coal mine. I am showing you, you know, and I have never hid anything from anybody, especially in the YouTube, about all the things going on. I've said everything, and I've, and I've presented myself. You've seen that times when I've been hit with this thing. You've seen times when I've been cleared up, okay? Because that's part of the battle. But you got to have this attitude that you're not going to give up and it's not going to win. And you're not going to surrender to the AI. You know, you got to have that compulsion. Look, you know, the way I see this is how I see it. And I'm presenting it to you just from this perspective. I, for one, believe in a living God. I don't believe in a bloody machine. I don't believe in any AI. I don't believe in any Lucifer. I don't believe in any of that horse hockey. None of it. Okay. That's just the way I'm wired. And that's just the way I'm built. Now, mind you, I had some help along the way because at one time I didn't believe in God and I did do and I do today. Well, I did a long time ago. I, I came to an acceptance of that fact and that reality. You know, I did. I, I guess if you want to put it really um, in this perspective, um, I didn't meet Jesus. Jesus met me kind of thing because <laughs> I didn't believe in Jesus either. <laughs> I do not. I do. But I'm just saying at that time. So when we're looking at this stuff today, you know, you got to, and again, Christ, it wasn't for God. I wouldn't be here today. I'll tell you that straight out. I, I got to say that, you know, because I never really give God that much glory in this regard because I, again, I always forget about it because I'm so distracted with stuff. But if it wasn't for Christ, I wouldn't be here today. I'll tell you that straight out uh, because I didn't believe at one time. I do today. And I'll tell you that straight out. I don't have any bones about it either. And if you have a problem with it, that's your problem. But if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. And I will tell you this, and I, would, I probably would have been dead by now, a long time ago. Um, this basically has made me the canary in the coal mine. And he basically, this was, I guess, the lesson I had to go through. It's been a lot of fun. I wish there could have been an easier way. <laughs> but through all this, I've been able to experience every nuance, every, um, every aspect. No, I shouldn't say every, but a lot of the aspects of this, this, biotech that I've been inflicted with uh, I've now had to deal with and I've had to, and I've been dealing with it now I'm giving that to you because for a lot of you if it hasn't started it might uh, it's only a matter of time before they start accessing more DNA and again the solutions we put on the site on the augmentedforce.com site there's a, a YouTube recipe link there's a nano solution if you haven't found it Go look it up, go download it, have it on hand. Go look at the nano bucket, have it on hand. It could be the difference between uh, long suffering and a lot of you have had 20, 25 years of this nano poisoning and you've been misdiagnosed with uh, restless leg. Uh, <coughs> what's the other one? Fibromyalgia. Uh, autoimmune diseases because your immune system is attacking the body because these particulates have saturated the system and it's trying to get it out <coughs> as a result excuse me one second 
So I'm getting hit by aliens. <laughs> As a result of this misdiagnostic, you have been suffering unnecessarily because you weren't given the right prognosis to deal with this stuff. Because again, we are the great experiment. America and you know, and Canada are the experiment, and they can release whatever nano agents they want into the atmosphere, and it's okay. <laughs> And we're supposed to be asked permission to be experimented on. And basically, I guess it's all a matter of how they're asking. Uh, but anyhow, I'm pointing this out to you so that you understand that this is not just a one type of attack. It's not some pathology. You're being hit with frequencies. You're being hit with frequencies all the time. This is why at between 2 and 4 a.m. in the morning, your smart meters and your... Gwen towers are going off and they are disturbing that sleep cycle especially at that time because at that time is when your body releases growth hormone and at that time those frequencies are coming in and they may disrupt your your pattern uh, that does disrupt your pattern and it may try to again get a, a data mining effect going on on your system so again, this is where, again, screening and blocking will come in handy. I've had people, so I'm going to talk about this repulsor again, uh, who have been taking that repulsor to bed, and they said they've been able to sleep. Now, this repulsor, like I said, they're, they're ceramic magnets. You can buy them at Michael's, or you can order them online through any any place that sells magnets. Okay, I got them the size of a nickel, which is about maybe a half inch in circumference. Um, and basically what you do is you get a piece of duct tape, about eight or nine inches, put them in, Put the first one in. Put the flap over the tape. The tape flap over the top and on the side. Uh, curl them around and then start lining them up. Make sure they're the same polarity, north north or south south. And run about 20 of them. And as you go every four or five, peel, take the tape from the sides and tape up each side so these things don't come loose on you and take off. And when you get to the 20th one, take the flap, flap it over, uh, seal the tape, and then tape it up again. And now you made yourself a mini repulsor. Now this again can be used when you're traveling. I put one in a couple in the visor. I keep a couple on my body because I feel while I'm driving as well, it puts out that field. And if there is a tower hitting, again, it you may find it may not have as a full effect. And you may find at the same time, you don't go into that daydreaming state while you're sleeping. It's another concept, just so you know. Now, I'm going to show you how to make a portable ground. What I do is I take... Uh, what I do is I take a um, piece of copper and I put two magnets inside of copper, probably, I don't know, two inch piece of copper, just enough to fold over the magnet. Um, uh, anyway, so what I do is I fold it over and then I crimp the sides and I leave just enough of an opening where I can hook in a, a, an alligator clip and then I'll wrap, it up with, uh, I'll wrap that piece up with uh, copper wire. And then what I do is I get a oh, two foot, two and a half foot wire. I put alligator clips on each end, tape up the, uh, uh, seal, uh, seal them up, crimp them up really tight, and wrap them up with some tape. So I'll tape the one piece, the copper piece, to my to my t-shirt where the piece is touching my chest. The other wire comes out out of my pants and onto my belt where I attach it to a magnet. Okay, I got two magnets where I got one on inside each inside of the belt. As a result, I've now cre cre created a portable ground. So when I'm getting hit with frequencies or I'm getting charged up, it's discharging that out of my body into my belt. Okay, this is how you can make a ground. Another thing I've done is I've taken copper, co pieces of copper, put them in my shoes, and what I've done is I've attached a copper wire to them, and what I do is I have that piece of wire come up and I wrap it around my leg so that while I'm walking, my body's generating a charge again, and it's discharging it into my shoe. So this is, again, to stop any charging that may be occurring from the ground. Because at nighttime, especially right now, I'm having the radio show, and the Gwen Tower is on. I can tell it's on because my floor is vibrating. So it, and because when the Gwen Towers go on, they send the signal down into the earth. So anything you can use to disperse or discharge that buildup of energy 
so that your cells it protects your cells from G, uh, DNA damage because again when you get charged up like that with these different fields it causes more damage to the DNA which then allows these nanoparticles to integrate more into your into your into your matrix so the more you keep the cells discharged the, the more integrity they maintain and it's harder for these things to assimilate to them this is another thing you can do okay now the other thing I'm going to talk about is the triangle. I'm going to be really quick about it because I've only got a short limit of time. The triangle basically they make a two and a half foot triangle by using the paper towels left over those little cardboard towels. I flatten, connect them, staple them together. I seal them up with some kind of plastic or tape and then what I do is I put tape that's facing on the outside and I put magnets on them. So I got six, ma uh, six magnets on each side and I put more tape on top. So by the time I'm done, I've got anywhere from 36 to 42 magnets taped up and sealed. And then I run at least 80 to 90 turns of wire along that, that um, triangle, tape it up, seal it. And then what I do is I run my either, I'll seal it up so that with duct tape and other tape so that it uh, it's seals the wire. I've got about a two foot extension from the triangle where I got alligator clips. And what I do then is connected to a power supply and I put that into the bathtub with me. And what happens is instead of having the bucket now, I have a triangle in the bathtub which is pulsing. And if you have a magnet in there with you, you can feel it pulse all the way through your body. If you put it on top of your body, it will pulse the uh, your chest down to your back. If you put it in the pelvic region, it will hit your uh, lower intestinal reproductive system to your backside. If you put it on your legs, if you put it on your... Um, your hamstrings it'll hit your uh, sorry on your quadriceps it'll go right down your hamstrings you can put your feet inside of it you could put your head inside of it and it will release these nanobots in the body so again if you're interested in that send me an email I'll send you the photo or send you the video so you can show you how to make it okay and all you need basically for that the material you're gonna need is speaker wire okay using speaker wire because the wire isn't that heavily insulated so allows more of the field to go through all right so again I, I went through it kind of fast because I'm running out of time. So again, if you if you wanted me to talk about it next week's show, I can do that as well. I can you know re go over it again. But anyway, just send me an email, independence at yahoo.com, and I will send you how to make it. How's that? All right. Before I go on, I'm always talking about the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network and supporting the network. It's a activist network. Give them what you can. Help them out any way you can. I'm also talking about shopping at the farm, natural earth organics, 519-980-5995 and you just snowberry farms out near the Belleville area a buddy of mine out there sell, uh, raises sheep uses the bricks method in uh, manipulating the soil again I've been buying my stuff from him for a while again if you go on my site look at snowberry farms especially those of you in Canada and support your local farmer this is what I mean by supporting a local farmer a guy who's trying to do the best he can he needs your support Okay, I've got www.health-access.com over in the United Kingdom. Again, John is uh, you know, using information that we're also using here to help the Europeans. So if you're over in Europe, check them out. Uh, Bye-bye-bluesky.com. I can't emphasize enough to go check out uh, Susan's site. She's done a wonderful job as far as presenting about chemtrail dam uh, dangers as well as nano. She's becoming more and more multi um, multiplexed. And a lot of different things in activism. So again, check her out, support her. There's another one called Gag Canada. You might want to check out Bernard, Bernadette Green's site. Check her out, see what's going on. Uh, December 11th, keep that in mind. If you are in the Windsor area, we're doing a workshop. It's going to be a freebie workshop. Again, it's what we have, we got what they call a billboard campaign. So again, to support the billboards. We're, you know, I'm doing, I'm offering free workshops that are, or free consultations that day, not a workshop, free consultations. So come on in if you need a consultation. It'll be a freebie. Support uh, any support toward the b billboard. Uh, again, give them what you can to keep the billboards going. We need to keep the billboard um, platform happening so we can keep get everybody to wake up and see what's going on and then make some real changes to our environment, our aerial environment. Um, again, uh, that's going to be December 11th between uh, 12 and 3 uh, a.m. or p.m. Anyway, also, I've got on my site, augmentandforce.com. If you look at the site, there's a link called a catalog link. Feel free to access that link. There you'll find, you know, the flash drive, the bucket, and other things there. The flash drive is a 32-gig flash drive. Again, 
Um, it's got books, radio shows, databases, ra uh, interviews, uh, videos, all in one. And also, again, we have different things that can help you. So again, to reach me is 519-977-5351 or uh, independence at yahoo.com. All right. Uh, <laughs> when, if you need videos, I have recorded these things. I haven't been able to get get them on YouTube. Uh, just been it's been one of those times where things hit all at once, and so I've been really busy. Uh, again, and I've also started the Podomatic to. Again, get more information out there. So if you're really interested, let me send me an email. It depends at yahoo.com. And I'll send you the videos I did. I did film it so you have an idea what to do. Uh, I got, actually had a guy in Portugal make one. And he contacted me, contacted me today. And he couldn't believe what came out of his body in the tub. So again, this is another way of reducing and removing. You're, getting, you're in a tub with a saline solution. Three or four different salts. You're allowing this thing to pulse you while you're in the tub, allowing the salts to again get into the cells and flush out these nanos. So again, check it out. All right, listen, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, again, feel free to access my site, access anything we've got. And until next week, uh, stay, help yourselves, help each other, cooperate. All right, talk to you next week. Take care.